Good morning, Professor Vern. You're not going to believe the dream I had last night. Good morning, Administrator. Tell me about it. Well, in my dream, I walked into your lab without knocking. <laughs> Professor? Pardon, oui, sans son, mon secret, ne pas été découvert jusqu'à maintenant. I was not expecting anyone. Oh my god, is that... you're drinking... Tomato juice. It's good with the teeth. But, but I thought... You can't believe everything you see on TV about us. Anyway... You will leave here and forget you if I sold me like this. I will forget, forget, forget. Wow, you have quite an imagination, Administrator. What the? Oh, that's the robot's Halloween costume. Anyways, Professor Vern, I understand we have a system that captures and stores energy on our metro system. Can you help explain that? Absolutely, Administrator. That's the Wayside Energy Capture and Storage System. But first, we need to discuss some basic motor theory as it relates to electrified rail cars. And I just happen to have a mock-up to demonstrate the principles involved. Professor Vern, you always have the coolest mock-ups. Yes. Now, a basic motor has two halves. The spinning part is called the rotor, and that's connected to the shaft. The other half is the stator, and that's part of the housing of the motor. You see, magnetic forces between the two halves of the motor push each other and cause it to spin. See here, when I place two magnets next to each other, that they push against each other. Now, motors use electromagnets which are magnets created by taking a coil of wire and connecting electricity to it. Now see when I place the magnet next to the coil of wire and apply electricity to it, observe what happens. Wow, this reminds me of high school physics class. Ah, yes. Now, recognize the front portion of a metro rail car. And inside, we have the rail car's traction motor. It's important to note that the traction motor actually has two jobs with one being to propel the train and the other to act as a generator. See here when I have the motor switch in the propulsion position that I apply electricity to the motor and it spins the train wheel. That makes sense, but how can a motor also be a generator? Great question, Administrator. You see, motors convert electrical energy to mechanical energy, but it can also work in the opposite way. If you spin the shaft of a motor, it will generate electricity. Now see, when I place the motor switch in the regenerative braking position, and I spin the train wheel, that the motor acts as a generator, and it powers the light. Cool, so when does a rail car's motor need to act as a generator? The motor acts as a generator when we need it to help slow the train. This is called regenerative braking. You see, during braking, the spinning train wheels cause the motor to act as a generator, and it generates electricity, which helps slow the train. Now, most of this regenerative energy is lost. That is, up to now. So that's when we grab the electricity that the train is giving off. Administrator, that's such a colloquial description of the magnanimous events transpiring. Sorry, Professor Vern. Please continue. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, think nothing of it. Now, in regenerative braking, the traction motor acts as a generator and generates electricity, which is captured by the Wayside Energy Capture and Storage System. Didn't I just say that? Ah, uh, I guess you did, Administrator. Uh, bravo this time. I need to see this operation in action. OK, let's go. Administrator, I've asked M.MTA, Metro Manager of Maintenance, Eric Bowser, to join us today. Hi, Eric. Can you tell us about the benefits of this system? Certainly, Mr. Quinn. The Wayside Energy Capture and Storage System saves a lot of energy and reduces our energy costs by $55,000 a year. Administrator, observe the indicators on the unit. It's showing that the system is capturing and storing energy. This means a tr nearby train is doing regenerative braking. That's fascinating. So how does it work, Professor Vern? The system monitors the third rail. And when voltage reaches a certain high level, this means a train is doing regenerative braking, and the system captures and stores the energy in supercapacitors. Professor Vern, what is a supercapacitor? Administrator, engineers use either capacitors or batteries to store energy. 
capacitors are low power, fast acting devices, while batteries are high power, but slower devices. A supercapacitor, also called an ultra capacitor, has the properties of both. It's a newer technology capacitor that's both a high power, fast acting device. That's fascinating. Administrator, now observe the indicators on the unit. It shows the system is discharging stored energy. This means a nearby train is taking off from a station. In this case, the third rail voltage dips, triggering the system to discharge energy. Professor Vern, I can't thank you enough for explaining energy storage and capture to us today. Hey, you want to join me for lunch? My pleasure. Uh, thanks anyway. I'm kind of on a liquid diet right now. Mm -hmm.